Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me tonight, and welcome to Star Sector. Now, this I know is not the usual thing that we do, but Star Sector is a great game. I've been playing it for a long time, kind of off and on. I got back into it fairly recently, and I just really had to share. I'm going to turn the music down slightly because I don't know how it is for you, but it's still a little loud for me. Possibly I'm just sensitive to noises like that. In any case, Star Sector. Uh, it used to be called Starfarer when I bought it back in 2012. It was an early access then. It's still an early access because this game has grown so incredibly much over the last, god, seven years. I bought it in 0.5 something, I think, and now it's in 0.91. Uh, the developer, Alex, says it's still an alpha, which, uh, to me, if a game with this many features and, and frills and details gone into it is still an alpha, then uh, I, I have no idea what the beta is going to look like. But in any case, Star Sector started off as more or less just a combat simulator. And you can still see that in the missions tab here. You have all these little these little combat things where you pilot spaceships against other spaceships. And it's fantastic. The combat system is very, very tight. Um, but it, it's grown to be a whole lot more than that. So this video is just kind of an introduction to the game. I will be doing a series on this game, but probably not a super long one, because the game can go forever. This is one of those kind of endless games, and the goals that it sets will last you a very long time. For example, if we hit on my load games here, we can see that my... I have a game that I started, and this is very, very shortly after the game starts, Cycle 206. I have another game that's been going for eight in-game years, where I've maxed out the level cap and... Uh, this has taken me a number of hours. Now, it was on easy difficulty because this was actually the first one I started off and kind of jumped in and started started flying around, doing stuff, from seeing if I still remembered how to play. But in any case, you can see the game goes on for a long time, and eight in-game years is not enough to experience everything this game has to show you. But let's jump into a mission, and I will show you how the, uh, how the combat system works. Let's just jump into a... Fistful of Credits, the very first mission. So in the very first mission, you're running uh, the Stranger 2, a standard Lasher frigate, and you have the Milk Run, a Hound combat freighter, in support of attacking a Mule smuggler combat freighter. So you can see you can hit F1 to see more info, and it tells you what you've got on this ship. So the Stranger 2 here has two light assault guns, two Salamander medium-range missiles, three light machine guns, an unstable injector and auxiliary thrusters. Whole mods are things that basically modify how the ship functions. Um, lots and lots of stats here, all of which, well, like a lot of these end up not being important during combat. These basically don't. Um, everything else ends up being important in combat, and it's a fairly complex system, but one that you get a hand handle on fairly intuitively. So, let's hop into it. We're going to deploy everything. And I'm just going to pause real quick. So, this is what you see when you're in combat. Here we have uh, my ship, the Stranger 2. You can see it's named down in the bottom left corner. It has a hull bar. I know the, the screen scrolls when I try to do that. It has a hull bar. It has a flux bar. Flux is basically energy input. Your ship can only have so much flux. If the flux bar ever goes into overload, ever tops out, your ship will, well, overload. Damage taken on your shield, which I just set up right there. You can see it opening and closing. Uh, is converted into flux. So, that's the main way you can flux out, as it's called. Um, if somebody hits your shield too hard too fast, you will, well, flux out, and you'll, uh, you'll end up unable to do anything until your flux bar drains for a while. Every ship has a peak active performance time, after which it starts losing combat readiness. If your combat readiness goes down too low, your ship starts malfunctioning. Smaller ships have shorter peak combat peak active performance times. Uh, you have your weapons in various groups. Right now I have them in groups 1, 2, and 3. These were preset for me. Group 3 is a bunch of light machine guns spaced around my hull. You can't actually see all the weapons on the ship. So you can see I have a machine gun there, a machine gun there, one there. Group 1 is my two light assault guns there and forward-facing hard points. Uh, the machine guns are all in turrets and you can see their arcs of fire and how they overlap. So you can see I actually have pretty good coverage with my machine guns. I can fire them all forward if I want to. Uh, similarly, my light assault guns are actually fixed facing forward, and then my salamanders, they're on alternating fire, so instead of one click firing both guns, one click will fire only one missile at a time. Um, and they're fixed facing forward, but they're homing missiles, so that doesn't matter so much. So, 
let's show you how combat works. That over there is my target. I'm going to hit R and lock onto it. You can see its speed, its range, its hull, a little icon of how its armor is doing. Let's see, right now it has all of its armor cells filled in. We'll try to change that. Right now I'm going to launch my missiles at it. And since they're salamander missiles, they will try to home in on the engines. And so will I. So, I've killed one engine. And I'm very, very bad at piloting fast ships. Alright, so the yellow numbers are armor. You can see my flux is going up way, way high, so I'm going to back off and vent to get rid of some of it. And let's drop some more salamanders on him. My goal here is to chew through his armor. You can see I actually ripped off most of the armor off... Oh god, I accidentally shot my own ship with a missile. I ripped most of the armor off of his rear. But what I need to do is get close enough to take the rest. We're going to activate my accelerated ammo feeder, and he dropped shields to vent at just the wrong moment. Good on him. Those missiles are trying to home in on my engines. They don't do a whole lot of damage as long as they don't hit the engines, so I'm just going to let them land where they will. Up, oh, up, oh, he's venting again. Couldn't quite catch him. The accelerated ammo feeder is, of course, my system as the lasher, which lets me double my rate of fire for a little while. So now that I'm behind him, I can pour shots into his rear until he turns. And you can see there I did some pretty significant damage. But since I am smaller and faster, I can always get around him. Alright, I need to be careful of these missiles. Go away. Go away now. Go away, missiles. Salamanders are dedicated to locking onto your engines and trying to kill you that way. They try to, uh, instead of really killing you, they just try to disable your engines to render you helpless. Alright, and got the engines. I can't quite flex him out this way. But, my friend can get behind him. You may notice that I'm faster when I'm not shooting and don't have my shields up. Oh, there he goes. I got overloaded because I was too close to the explosion. But um, you do have a, a boost in your speed when you're at zero or low flux. So we have destroyed the Charon Club Cov Bloom. Stranger 2 and Milk Run did a good old job. 100% victory. And that's a very small, basic combat. Uh, combat in Star Sector gets crazy. Like, for example, this. You can see this is one Paragon-class battleship against an entire fleet. An Onslaught-class battleship, a heavy cruiser, uh, a bunch of carriers, uh, a couple of lighter cruisers, a bunch of destroyers and frigates, and of course, a lot of fighters, including a lot of bombers. The TTS Invincible here is a crazy powerful ship. It's very, very slow, top speed of 30, compared to the 150-some that I was flying around in in that frigate, but it has a crap load of missiles, it has an incredibly powerful system, it has a ton of armor hull integrity, its shield is extremely efficient, um, the shield, this shield transforms every point of damage it takes to 0.45 flux, which means, combined with its enormous flux capacity, it takes forever to bring down a Paragon's shields. And, uh, yeah, in general, there's, uh, there's a lot. So I'll tell you what, let's pop into my, uh, my late game game here, and I'll show you kind of where the, where Star Sector ends up. So first of all, when you start off, like, this is a, this is a very early game game. I've just started, I'm level 5, your first few levels go by very rapidly. I think I'm still in the starting star, star system in this one. So currently, I'm actually being, I'm leaving Darren Kuyu Mining Station. I just got a level. I have four character points, so I think I just finished the initial, uh, the initial missions. We can look at my fleet tab and we can see that right now I have a mule class combat freighter with with some damage, compromised armor, so a lasting degradation. That's probably a... I think that's a ship that I picked up after a battle I salvaged. I have a hammerhead, which also has lasting damage. Three of them, actually. I should probably replace this ship when I can. Uh, decent weaponry, heavy maulers, harpoons, light dual auto cannons. I have a wolf class frigate, so a effective but fragile high-tech destroyer. I have a lasher with the uh, pretty much the same setup that I was just fighting with, and I have a light tanker that will not go into combat. This is just a, a fuel ship. Um, right now, I am in the Galatia star system, heading down to Ankira, I think on a trade mission? Uh, I think I'm smuggling organs, is what I'm doing, and I have some medals. I think I picked that up out of a fight. 
but you can see my fleet has you know in cargo I have 165 crewmen a whole bunch of fuel some supplies a little bit of stuff scattered around currently I have 9,000 credits uh, I'm doing pretty well for myself for a, an initial starting position uh, there's also a cargo pod over there I have some cargo space so I can go pick those up and uh, just uh, just take that fuel right there Oh, that puts me over my fuel cap that's probably why I ditched it if you're over your cap down here uh, you have to spend excess supplies in order to keep them so we're just gonna drop off the excess that'll be fine so this is the early game this is kind of how you start off and then let's take a look at the late game this is where you reach in the end game of star sector you may notice right now i have about two million credits this is by no means the highlight i'm carrying 35 100 fuel three over 3,000 I only have 300 supplies because I've been busy and I've been using up a lot of supplies in my cargo bay right now I am carrying a ton of crap I have been out doing a lot of fighting I've looted a lot of weapons off of destroyed enemy vessels including some very valuable ones I'm currently carrying a corrupted nano forge which is a vital late game item uh, a synchrotron core and an alpha level AI core I have a whole bunch of blueprints, all of which I actually already know, except this Ludic Church blueprint, which I guess I'll learn. Um, I have some survey data, some large high-tech weapons, uh, a lot of fighter LPCs that let me build fighters, a whole bunch of lower-level AI cores. I'm carrying a thousand heavy machinery, and my fleet is crewed by 4,200 men. My fleet, or troops, I suppose, my fleet is much larger and incredibly more powerful. Set it around three capital ships, the Achilles, Ajaxes, and Idolater. Um, I have a variety of carriers carrying uh, close to 30 wings of fighters, all told. I have a couple of uh, tankers carrying my fuel, a couple of freighters carrying my stuff, some escort destroyers, all that stuff. This is a, it's a much different, uh, different fleet proposition. And I am about, if I recall correctly, I was about to go fight this Remnant Nexus. Uh, normally I would actually leave this Remnant Nexus alone, but I think this was, this is the, oh no, this is New Marmara. I felt like there was a valuable planet here that I wanted, wasn't there? Uh, hold on. Where was I going? Uh, nowhere apparently. Well, let's, yeah, laying in a course to a waypoint. So, let's go show you what a, a later game battle can look like. We're going to take on this Remnant Nexus. Actually, let's wait for its defender to get close enough to participate. There we go. So now we've got some Remnant. So these are, this is a late game enemy. You'll, you'll see more about them later on. We're just going to deploy everything we can, which is everything except the non-combat ships. So, for my flagship, the Achilles, which is a Legion-class battle carrier, you can see the lag as we begin to deploy all of our many, 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 many fighters. We're going to burn drive forward. This ship has uh, four wings of fighters, a pair of high-powered Mjolnir cannon, some Sabo short-range missile anti-shield pods, and a couple of flat cannons for point defense, plus, of course, all of the fighters, of which there are a number. And that is the enemy station. We're going to launch a fighter strike on it immediately. There is a fleet command system in this game. Uh, it's fairly rudimentary. The point is for you to spend a lot of effort flying your own ship as well as commanding the fleet. I'm gonna... Yep, I just rammed my own ship. Eh, I'll be all right. But it's still quite useful. So that's the station. Let's pause real quick. As you can see, that station is kicking the shit out of this ship, and it's also doing some damage to that ship simultaneously. Let's go into the, the uh, orders menu for the moment. We're gonna order my more fragile destroyers back to guard some of my larger ships. This will hopefully help keep them from getting focused and killed. They don't really have the the stuff they need to avoid getting killed if they're up here getting focus fired. My ship, meanwhile, does, and so does this Conquest class battle cruiser, and so does my other capital ship and my other heavy cruiser, both of which are back behind me at the moment. So what I want to do is go forward. I've ordered my fighters to engage. You can see the orders engage thing down there at the bottom. So we're just going to roll on forward. You can see my fighters going in. Doing battle with the enemy fighters. And the ultimate goal here, of course, is to destroy everything in the enemy fleet. We'll see how it goes. We've 
disable one of their ships, albeit a fairly small one. Okay, that's a weapon platform. They don't actually have any shields, it looks like. So, we're just going to begin pounding them. As you can see, capital class ships are very, very slow. Uh, my max speed here is about 30. Uh, albeit, I do have a burn drive that can speed my speed me up. But for right now, we're just pouring fire into this weapons platform in an effort to kill it before it can destroy us. Oh, oh, we've been fluxed out. See, that's what happens when you overload. I wasn't paying attention to my flux. Got overloaded. I was talking too much while trying to play. But, fortunately, my armor is so tough that I can actually sit there and take it pretty well, even when fluxed out. So we're just going to vent real quick. And then we'll go back to firing. I don't feel the need to put my shields back up just yet. Uh, my fighters have mostly been destroyed, and you can see my replacement rate is down quite low. Let's take out this ship. Because God knows he's going to be a pain. Okay, we fluxed him out with the Sabo pods and destroyed him. And the Remnant Nexus is about to go as well. Remnant Nexi aren't honestly all that tough. Uh, their fleets are actually quite a bit tougher, I would say. When you have large fleets, that is. But this was only a small one. So, we got him dead. And what's left? Doesn't look like anything. So that was the battle. Fairly one-sided, but you can see how uh, larger fleet engagements tend to be. We lost 50 crew, we recovered 16,000 credits from the wreckage, and we got another alpha level AI core, beta level, a couple of gammas, hundreds of supplies, a whole bunch of fuel, heavy machinery, all kinds of goodies. Right now we're gonna take all, and then we're gonna have to drop a whole lot of it. We're gonna have to drop the metal. We're gonna have to drop a whole bunch of the uh, fuel. And then, I think we're just going to keep all the supplies. They are going to be just absolutely burned down by repairs and combat readiness recovery, but that's okay. So you can see here, every time I deploy, it costs me some of my combat readiness. It recovers at a steady rate per day and costs supplies to do so. Repairing damaged ships also costs supplies. So there's a whole balancing act of how many supplies you want to carry and how far you want to go and et cetera, et cetera. But the main thing here is that you, uh, you know, you just have enough to complete whatever battle it was you were carrying out, and then uh, get back to civilization somewhere. So, I've used up a whole bunch of my supplies. I'm going to salvage the, uh, the wreckage field here for some more, just in case. I don't need those metals. And, ah uh, yes, see, tech mining at Delta Ang 1. I have gotten to the point where I own planet. So you can see my map of the sector. This is this is the map. And you can see how many star systems there are. There are a lot of places to go in this game. These are what are referred to as the core worlds, which are inhabited, essentially heavily inhabited. And this is where you'll spend most of your time, especially in the early game. All this stuff is kind of exploration fodder. But I have established colonies here at Beta Brea. Uh, Novi Teve, I have two. Down here at Beta Glyph, I have one. I've also taken over a couple of the of the core world star systems. Alpha Algebar used to have an enemy colony in it, which I destroyed, and um, which I've taken over now myself. And in Kumari Kandam, there are several other factions with colonies, but Kumari Kandam Seven I own and is one of my kind of core worlds here. And I've actually I've I've actually raided all three of these worlds, and I'm currently just kind of waiting for them to dissolve, which happens over time. Down in my command menu, you can see all of the colonies that I have. Uh, you can see how much money they're making. Uh, overall, my total income is something like six to eight hundred thousand a month. Um, the various items that are assigned to them, they're all late game stuff. You can see a couple of them I actually have being run by AIs, which is good praxis because you can only manage so many administrators and you can only have so many uh, colonies under your own personal leadership. So using AIs for it is a good idea, albeit comes with risks. Uh, and uh, you can see, you, you can build things on them. So Delta Ang, for example, has vast ruins. So I finished building tech mining there, which means that I can uh, I can loot stuff out of these uh, these ancient ruins of the domain from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Delta Ang otherwise doesn't have a huge amount of value. It does have rich ore deposits. So I am going to throw some growth incentives on it to keep it from shrinking. 
Um, that will kick growth up so that I can start uh, getting it bigger and uh, making it more valuable. But for right now, it doesn't have a whole lot going for it. Uh, we are going to upgrade that to a mega port. And then we will build an orbital station. I, which one you pick doesn't honestly matter all that much. I like the low-tech ones. They're interestingly chunky. And ground defenses. And a patrol headquarters. So we'll get all those defenses going. Uh, we're not going to make a whole lot of money off this colony, but once the tech mining has played out, once the ruins have been tapped, essentially, we can scrap them and replace them. You can only have so many industries on a given colony, and more as it goes up. Uh, we can do mining here, we can do refining here. The hazard rating isn't too high, so the uh, upkeep isn't too bad for things. Uh, o times 0.78 after all my modifiers. Since I have a fairly large empire, pretty much everything that the colonies need can be supplied internally which lowers upkeep significantly. And uh, as it grows, we can uh, we can turn it into a, a viable colony that will at least pay its way, even if it's not making me a ton of money. But the tech mining was the main reason to settle Delta Ang. In any case, like I said, this is just kind of a quick introduction. This is a huge game, and you will go from, you know, smaller than I was in that first game to bigger than I am now. And this is not all the ships I own. This is... Uh, and I can, of course, build more ships. Since I own all these colonies, I can build a ton of ships, actually, uh, very, very easily. And I can construct my own capitals quite effectively. I have blueprints for a whole bunch of cruisers I can build. I don't have the blueprint for the eagle, which I would like, but uh, destroyers, frigates, etc. I have tons and tons of options. I can set up my own doctrine for the automatically spawned fleets that are created by my colony defense. So my show my total income. My income for last month was 850 grand, and uh, yeah, it's it's a big game, and it just gets bigger. It's uh, it's great. I really love it. In any case, I think I am going to play at least a few episodes of this on the channel. I'm not sure if I'm going to start a new game and kind of show you the process from the beginning, or carry on from here and show you some late game exploration, pirate hunting, uh, base destruction, colonies colony building, etc. That could be kind of interesting. But, um, I don't know. Let me know what you'd like to see, because I love this game. I'm not gonna, you know, no bones about it. This game is incredibly deep and interesting. Now, it's not perfect. It doesn't have everything, you know, done. Like, not everything is ready in this game yet. It's still in alpha. And for being in alpha, it's amazing. Uh, I definitely am going to keep playing it, want to watch it grow and see how it goes. Uh, there'll be a link to the website in the description if you want to check it out or buy it for yourself. It's not expensive. It's like 20 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. I'm not sure. In any case, it's absolutely not bad, and it's really... I would say it's worth it, and I don't normally give... Uh, I don't normally give recommendations that openly, shall we say, but it's uh, good stuff. So in any case... Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in another video. But uh, Star Sector, check it out. Uh, watch this space. More will be coming to you. So, thanks very much. See you next time.